Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 15 of our FTV Skies Extra Mode Let's Play. I know it's been a while since I've been on the screen, however, I'm back. I'm feeling slightly better than before, however, I'm still not 100%, but I felt like I needed to make the video to actually expand on what we did in our last episode, which was landing on the moon here. So we've recovered our rocket. We are slowly depleting our oxygen, but luckily we have our four tanks here that we can consume as they get consumed. And we can just run around and jump on the moon freely like this. It's so cool. I love it. However, there is another village right beside, or not another village, a moon village right beside where we start, which is really cool because these guys should have Lunarian villagers. Yep, here they are. Oh, he's unemployed. He's a librarian. So they're very similar to our villagers back in, well, space, or I guess the real world. However, these guys here will have dash and cheese in them. And dash and cheese are the two things we need from the moon. So that's actually pretty useful. And they have some moon blocks in here. Nothing too important. I wish these dash plating blocks were actually useful, but you can't turn them back into actual dash, which is unfortunate. Did he just flush the toilet while I came in? That's cool. Anyways, these uh, Lunarian villages aren't very useful. They don't have much in them. Like I said, they have a chest with a few bit of dash and cheese. However, like I said, it, they're, it's not great. Like it's not worth it to run around and find all these chests or like to run around and find a village specifically like the villages aren't that useful i'd say one other thing to look out for while you're on the moon other than the villages that were just behind us is to look out for like these pillager outpost type of buildings and they're basically there just to well have another building space i guess they're not very useful i found like once again they have very similar loot tables to what we just found pretty much the exact same loot tables as far as i know and there's also moon dungeons however i don't believe they're fully implemented into ftb skies yet as the loot tables in them are still the old loot tables as far as i know now this might have been changed in one of the two more recent updates however as far as i know the moon dungeons aren't fully implemented yet so i don't recommend going out to go find one as they're usually pretty far away from where you start and these guys right here are corrupted lunarians that's what i was talking about basically like the zombie villagers of the moon and the reason we're down here is because we need dash and cheese to progress to mars now obviously there's a lot of things in between mars and the moon however we do need a lot of moon cheese which is this block right Right here and we have silk touch which is perfect so we have moon cheese and then we should be able to find some dash if we change our well, you can't really see it because the oxygen but if you can change your ultimine mode if you do you hold down the ultimine key so in my case the grave key above the escape key and then if you sh hold shift and you scroll with your mouse you can actually change what you're doing now i want the large tunnel and this will allow easy excavating without making giant holes all over the place and thanks to the fact fact that it is soul sand down here do we have food on us yeah we have salads okay probably not the best food to bring to the moon i will be honest okay now we're slightly further down we should be able to find some dash down here there is iron ore on the moon but that's not very useful to us i will be honest i want dash and here it is so this guy right here is dash once again we're gonna go ahead and mine that up and i do need space my inventory for it i'll throw out the nuggets and I also do want some moonstone specifically so i'm glad i picked some of that up i guess i don't really need the uh round flesh i can get rid of i want some more moonstone because specifically you need moonstone for some crafting recipes as far as i know and well there's no point of having to come back to get it however now that we have this i will set a home down here at the bottom of the moon so if you remember in our white pouch here i have warp scrolls now this is for our base so that's how we'll get back in a second and we'll just stick these in here for now just so we have some space we will set our moon home right here that was our home home <laughs> we'll set our moon home right here and now that it's set to the moon we can chuck those back in there and we can go back home if you remember and immediately we we're back home back at our base and what i want to do is i want to mine these with fortune so i do have a fortune three pickaxe here and that is just so you can get more ingots or i guess more raw ore per block now we can't quintuple sorry sex double our ores yet however oh we only got three which is unfortunate but our merit our our crusher right here will give us nine total dash and with that being crushed up we don't have it down in our sorter just yet however that is nine dash for us and i will put this in the filter so to process your dash dust what you actually need to do is throw it inside of an arc furnace we can't do that just yet as i'll show you if i throw this in here all of my energy will disappear before this even slightly cooks and without energy in it it just won't cook it'll just infinitely 
seemingly stay at the same level. So we can't even let that just run out of energy per permanently. So what we're going to have to do today is upgrade our infrastructure just a little bit. And that is mainly getting our biodiesel changed over to force infused biodiesel and maybe using oxygen. I'm not sure that's in our wheelhouse yet today. Okay, so it turns out I can actually upgrade these with oxygen. I went ahead and checked. The rotary condensator doesn't require any osmium and the electrolytic separator doesn't require any osmium either. So we can actually go ahead and make force infused biodiesel as well as oxygen and get these generators here running at a much better speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to put all of this back in here and we'll let these guys run out of power and while we do that what we'll do is grab ourselves everything we need to make these machines here. So a rotary condensator is a basic fluid tank which we can make. We'll make two of them. We also need a gas infused tank which is aluminum plates and then an energy tablet which is some gold in the infused alloys. And these are just signalum plates inside a metallurgy infuser. So we may as well make ourselves some more of these as well just because I believe we'll need yeah we'll need a bunch more infused alloy for this right here. So we should make ourselves another metallurgy infuser which requires more signalum. So that's pretty easy to make. So we've come over here and started smelting up signalum into signalum ingots. However our power source just really can't hold up at the moment so we can only cook so many at a time. I only do need the four at the moment and we'll leave some signal and blend because this is actually how you make lumium and while if you remember I complained a lot because I need lumium to make lumium gears I believe it is. I believe I need lumium gears for it. What do I need lumium gears for? So it turns out they have changed the phytogenic insulator recipe to overcharge electrum sheets, electrum gears, and a redstone flux coil. Now that really irks me because I built my entire system based off the fact that you actually have to get to the moon before you can get lumium which was fine and I thought okay that's that seems like a fair trade-off. Now that they've gone ahead and made it easier. You just need electrum, electrum, and some hardened gears or hardened glass, sorry. That's annoying, actually. That's very annoying. You should need to get to the moon. I think that was a fair trade-off. You need lumium gears to make the most OP version of farms because without lumium, you have to use things like this with your garden closures or a create farm right now these aren't bad they're very passive they work perfectly like i have no issue with them however it doesn't allow for compact systems with phytogenic insulators what i can do is i can just stick a phytogenic insulator down with a barrel below it and that's it i have two blocks rather than having cables or pipes and massive machines or like large spaces being used up it's i, I don't know i think that's a bad change that the pack devs have made however i digress with my four things oh i actually do want gears so I need my gear plate. With my gear plate, I can come back over here and make a signal and gear. And that'll just allow us to have another metallurgy infuser for redstone usage or whatever we need to use it for. So to add to our conglomerate mess of machines, I'm going to throw this guy down and I'll throw in a bunch of redstone as I'm going to make all of this signalum, well, a lot of the signalum into infused alloys, that is, because what you have to do is just throw in a signal plate inside of here. So what we'll do is very simply multi server press and eventually this will be automated as in the sense that it'll be automated with applied energistics. I won't passive infused alloys. I think that is a bit ambitious to say the least because A, you would need an arc furnace as an intermediary, which means I would need to do a lot of weird things <laughs> to have an arc furnace be passively like inter like I don't know, just out there. Oh, hello, Mr. Wandering Trader. Have you been changed in the most recent update? No, no, you haven't. I don't know why you said that. That was very offensive. However, we can go ahead and do this. Throw these guys in there. Luckily, these work out at that speed and we'll go ahead and throw three more dash in there and I'll just cook these up until we have enough used alloys to make our electrolytic separator and rotary condensator. Now this should be enough infused alloys to get us started. I made eight of them. I do have a few more in there cooking up. However, I should be able to make this which needs gold dust, aluminum, and iron. So we'll grab gold, aluminum, iron, and we'll give it to Ray... Oh, I didn't even read his name before. Ray Arthon. Ray Arthon? Ray Arthorn? Ray Ray Arthorn? whatever close enough we'll give it to Ray Ray, Ray uh, I'm just gonna stop trying to pronounce his name however it is gold dust on the side aluminum grit top two and then iron off to the side and there's our electrolytic core which means we can make one of these which means we can make one of these oh my goodness one of these there we go that's your electrolytic separator and then we need a rotary condensator which we need one more control circuit for which is another logic circuit do I have any more does not seem like it and then these were crafted how oh it's this guy okay so we need these and that 12 electronic components we made up and the circuit back lanes were just duroplast and copper do i have any duroplast left no i don't 
should have some copper plates. I have plenty of copper plates and I'll go grab some duroplast sheets from down below as I should have a few left. I know I didn't make too many because I was running out of latex and silver. However, okay, we still have 28. Decent amount. We'll make our backplanes, which means we can make all of the logic circuits we want, aka four. What I'll do is I will make three of these in our mineral fluid encapsulator over here. And we'll time to bag this just because it's very slow. That should be fast enough. Yeah, the power is barely fluctuating. We only need the one for now. The rest can wait and just cook up while it's doing it. I'll throw my signal and plates in here and do a switch while I'm at it. But I just need the one and we should be good to go to make the rotary condensator. And now we have oxygen for our machines. And this alone should be pretty fast. So I'll grab some pipes. That should be everything I need to connect these guys up oxygen. Now what I want to do is I want to move my biodiesel over a block, I guess. And that is just mainly to have it. Mind you, this won't be a permanent place for these guys, but I do need somewhere to put it temporarily. That isn't right where I need to run my oxygen line through, which means I'll need to actually bring the entire cable over a block, which is kind of annoying, but it should be fine. And then we'll use the wrench just because it is faster and just make sure I have flight back. Remove that. And then what we'll do is we'll run a line of pipes underneath the diesel generators. That should be the last one. And this will be for our oxygen. Oh no, I don't want it connecting there. I want to disable this input to none and then I can place the block down and we'll place a fluid tank in front. Now, if you've never used mechanism or an electrolytic separator for mechanism before, all you have to do is input water. So we're using an aqueous accumulator with the two waterlogged leaves as usual, a mechanical pipe just going in and then here it fills up with water and you can get hydrogen and oxygen. Now we don't want the hydrogen. So what I'm going to do is dump excess. Now, later on, we will have to use hydrogen for something I believe. I think it revolves around reprocessing oil and stuff like that in the future. However, that is not what we're going to be doing today, and I want the oxygen. So I'm going to let our liquid oxygen here fill up a bit. It should run eventually, like it should fill up decently fast. We can throw speed and energy upgrades in these guys, and these guys are easy enough to make. And the speed upgrade is just infused alloys, electron blend, redstone flux, and the upgrade matrix. And then the energy upgrade is osmium dust. So that is the reason we're not making speed upgrades at the moment is because the amount of osmium you need. And well, we don't have access to unlimited osmium. Now, while we wait for our oxygen to fill up to a decent amount before we unleash it into our generators, I do want to let these fill, fill all back up with biodiesel as I will be taking some time to make force infused biodiesel. However, that should be enough. Yeah, well, we'll just let that sit like that. That should be enough for these guys to run while we work on getting force infused logs. Now, the way to do this is we'll get rid of everything in our inventory, is you need to start it all with a force sapling. Now, a force sapling is simply made with three mystical yellow petals, a spring line dust, and a mineral sapling. So, before, we did need lumium to craft these, like I was saying before, but they have changed it to overcharge electrum, compact dirt, which is just dirt in a compactor. So if we chuck nine dirt in a compactor, we'll get our compact dirt. Oh, we also have some chests in there. Not sure how. And we also need our charger back. And if we take our charger, what we can do is make a simple line right here with press. Which way is this going? Actually, I'm not sure it actually really matters, but we'll do press at the end. We'll do charger in the middle. That shouldn't overstress. Nice. And we do need an HV connector with an HV wire as well. So with some more of these, what we can do is I'll destroy this tank and bring it back downstairs just because it is in the way. Connector here, HV, yeah, just making sure. And it should be able to connect to that guy, no issue, probably, yep, awesome. And compactor, awesome, Ch charger, I don't really care about this one bucket of polyethylene, I will be honest. And if I chuck my Electrum on here, oh, I don't want it all at the same time, actually. No, that's not going to work. I'm going to do one at a time. And this guy will slowly charge these guys up. And I mean slowly. And you can upgrade the Energizer. However, it does require Electrum to upgrade. So that's why I am making the four. Because if we look up the Phytogenic Insulator, I really should pin these recipes. I need two of them. And then for the Charger, I need two of them as well. So what I'm going to do is actually take them off before they get pressed or take off the press after two get made if that makes more sense yeah so we'll come back once these are finally crafted with the basic energizer it takes a long time to say the least also with the amount of rotational force i'm giving it it doesn't help that it's taking this long either but they should end up in here once they're done and we can make our phytogenic insulator soon in the meantime what i want to do is just make two electrum gears and I should have enough Electrum left over. I do not. I do have to smelt one Electrum up. 
Oh, wait, you know what? I was making a bunch of Electrum in my thing over here. Yeah, I made plenty of Electrum. Awesome. What am I making? I'm making gears. I don't want plates. One moment. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed the press as the second one there finished up. So I'll grab both of our sheets and these gears should be finished. Perfect. Now, with all hope, this should be enough to make one phytogenic insulator. Nope, we need a redstone flux coil. Now, there's our phytogenic insulator. So I went ahead and made everything I'll need to make force gems other than the crystallizer itself. Now the crystallizer is here, right, right here. Basically what you need is liquid force inside of the crystallizer. Now this guy requires a mana to operate, which is very interesting. And this requires our LDPE sheets, which we should have plastic on hand. And so we can go make some LDPE down below. I'm shocked I didn't make enough last time, but if I throw my LDP in here, I can get two LDPE sheets, come up above and make myself a liquid crystallizer, which is just mana diamonds, precision mechanism, living rock, cogwheel, fluid pipe, and that. So what I'm going to do is grab another spreader and we'll use our elven mana spreader that we got for free. So with this guy, we need to also provide it with rotational force. So I'm going to come up here and put a cog down and we'll run a large cog and belt contraption under our base. And that is our last belt. So I've just run some belts all the way around with up and downs, pretty simple. And this should not require, oh no, I do need to reconnect it. Where did I disconnect this? Because that turns this guy on, so that shouldn't be turned off. So where are these disconnected? Oh, it's this guy right here. Oh, and this is turned off as well. <laughs> I see. Not overstressed, good to know. And this should be turning by all accounts. Perfect. And it's working 960 SU, not too bad. And what I want to do with this guy is I want to provide it with my liquid force. So I'm going to have to do this manually for a while. It won't be automatic just yet, but eventually we can make this automatic once we have ender tanks. But at the moment, we just don't have that luxury. And how much oxygen have I built up in the meantime? 24 buckets, not too bad. And these guys still have a bucket of bile diesel. Not too concerned about those. So to make the force gem, I need to put liquid force inside of the crystallizer. And liquid force comes from a pyrolyzer. That's why we made that. The force planks come from, well, crafting force planks. And then obviously you make a force log. This is probably the most efficient way to set up and most compact way to set up force gem creation or well, force fluid creation i guess but we'll have a fluid drawer for our pyrolyzer so we'll stick that in there our pyrolyzer needs our sequential fabricator input and then the phytogenic insulator requires input like so that's it that is the entire setup and this is modular so it's expandable you can do multiple down the rows you can have them all go into the same tank by having more out and just pipe them in but this is completely modular you only need these five machines i say that but you also do need water being piped in so something like this and an automatic input and output from the bottom. What this will do is once there is a force sapling in here, which I don't have on me for some reason. So with a force sapling in our phytogenic insulator and also this phyto grow we got from a quest. Now you don't need to use this. You can also use bone meal, but in general, you don't need any of it. You can simply do it without any necessity and we'll connect all these with HV wire connectors as they do draw a bit of power. And by a bit, I mean a lot. And what I'll do is I will connect a I don't think these will connect all the way they might oh they do nice and once again I do need flight over here however we'll set all those up and this guy will start making force planks eventually so I've gone ahead and made myself a few little upgrades and if you see this guy has made a hundred and eight force logs that seems a little weird, and as well as force saplings. However, I'd rather not use Fighter Grow every time if I don't have to. Now, what this does is the catalytic reclamation chamber, if I remember, should only ever use it every 0.8 times. So every 0 0.8, there's a 0.8, chance that it uses it basically. So with the catalytic usage, we'll have that to basically use it 80% of the time. And I also want to throw two speed upgrades so it goes faster, as well as this hardened integral components. We 
Now these are pretty easy to make. It's just invar plates and gold gears, redstone and glass. And then there's also the reinforced ones, which are with signalum. However, I didn't want to go ahead and make more signalum gears, but we did get these from chests or loot or something. We got these from somewhere, but I will throw these in here with that. And these should fill up with power and also work a lot faster. Now for automation, I want to grab these out. I want to throw them into this guy. And as you see automatically, the four saplings went back in. Now the force logs, however, I do want to grab out one of them, place it in here and select that as the recipe. Now what I'll do is I'll do the same thing. Auto input enabled, auto output enabled. We'll do input from the top, output from the bottom. What this will do is it'll make force planks automatically from each log that is created. And then down here, auto input enabled, input top, auto output enabled, output bottom. Now we also do need a drawer. I was slightly mistaken. This isn't entirely modular in the sense that you can do multiple beside each other you do need an output for the gold power source now there might be a way to disable the output of these guys i'm not entirely sure however they're pretty useful because you do need nitro tnt later in the future they're also used for making basalt powder and you can make cold coke with them as well so it's pretty useful to keep them around however i believe there are upgrades to eliminate their in creation entirely however i do need another drawer and if i can fly i will grab one now come over here i'll stick down the drawer and i will let this guy output to the side as well we will lock him and i should be able to grab the bucket out and place it into this drawer down here for some reason i can't okay you just have to actually unlock it first different with fluid drawers i guess however now we have force liquid force being permanently made and we'll upgrade you to the max and i will get upgrades for this guy as well but yeah this is a very simple force fluid setup i will add upgrades onto this guy because that is the max amount of force logs you can also get but like i said this is a very simple setup and we'll just fill these in with concrete and very simply put some more automation wall going on up here now i said everything was going to be passive down below apparently i lied apparently i'm doing it up here for some reason but that is because i this is temporary i'm going to eventually move this down to our passive walls same with our steel same with everything however i do need access to energy the energy is down here don't get me wrong like i do have energy coming down it is just easier for me to access stuff up here at the moment as well as move this liquid force over to our crystallizer as we need it now what i'll do is i'll get some upgrades for those two drawers and i will set up a barrel to start making force gems over there so if we come back over here we have 7.6 buckets made up at the moment this guy will continue to cook as we do this however i do want to bring our drawer over here until we get under tanks that is which isn't actually too far away now that i say it and what i'll do is i'll throw my force drawer over here i will throw a pusher upgrade pushing downwards and this guy will start to make force gems now i have a pulley upgrade pulling from the west which is over there and yeah this guy will automatically make us force gems now i say automatically however it does require one bucket per force gem i believe oh no it only requires 200 millibuckets and about that much mana so it requires a decent amount of mana so we do need to get our cake factory back up and running which means we do need our force gems up and running to make like uh force and fuels biodiesel obviously so that is 38 force gems done which means we completed that quest and now all we do need to do is make force infused biodiesel now this is made in a therm thermopneumatic processing plant and all you have to do is infuse biodiesel with a force gem so that's pretty easy i've gone ahead and let our liquid oxygen flow into our generators here they're all empty of biodiesel and i have 32 buckets of force infused biodiesel here and we'll let them fill up and see how this goes and now we have 73,000 stress units running in pair like running to be made or i don't know how to say that but i can crank this guy up to 256 and we still have 51,000. oh it's so much nicer this guy is how much power are you generating now 2000 we're currently we're creating or over double what we were making before so none of our machines should be worrying about power yeah see these guys are actually filling up now like they were they were struggling to have 400 fe per tick and i should be able to if i grab my dash <laughs> now this may be ambitious but it, because I might have to upgrade my coils in a second here. But for now, we'll see if I can make myself my first dash ingot. That's not from a chest. No, it doesn't seem so. <laughs> okay, I knew that was ambitious. But I should be able to... What should I be able to do? I should be able to make a better buffer, maybe? Because this guy can only output so much, right? But the energy cube is filling up with a buffer. Hmm. Okay, there's a few things I can do. I can make a better energy cube. I should be able to, at least. It requires osmium. Okay, so that is next episode. I will be getting to osmium, as osmium requires osmium dust, which seems pretty simple. However, you need 
the centrifugal separator of platinum, and it's only a chance, which you can boost. But then this is made in the metallurgic infuser, which requires an aesium, and the aesium is made with aesium dust, which is made in the fabrication matrix, which is liquid force and silver dust. So we're going to need liquid force for a lot of things. So that is why I have gone ahead and made this setup here. However, this guy's still very, very slow. Even with this, I'm going to go ahead and speed him up just a few ticks as we do have the power to do so. We'll barely have the power to do so. However, this guy will go ahead and make us a bunch more liquid force. What I can do with that is make myself more force infused biodiesel. As you see, our biodiesel down here, we have 1.3 thousand buckets. I had just moved it from up above, but I do need force gems to actually make the force infused biodiesel as we are going to chug through it decently fast with this setup. Oxygen should never be a problem. Yeah, I'm already backfilled in oxygen. However, my force infused biodiesel is going down decently fast. It's yeah, one millibucket per tick and we just don't have the force gems to keep up with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait for this to fill up, make some more force gems over there. I will set back up our cake factory as well because we can now and it should just be one cog maybe. Is that all I needed to do? The belts are running, the mixer's running. What isn't running? Oh, I guess it's our thing over there. But we should have sweet berries now. Oh, no, we don't have sweet berries. Okay, so I need sweet berries and wheat, which we can also solve with our phytogenic insulators, that is. Oh, and this isn't even connected with the belt either. What does this need? Oh, that's our fan for cooking. Yeah, that's actually pretty useful as well. We have a belt on us. We do. You're not connected either. How is nothing connected? What did I disconnect? How did I even have this connected before? Now that I'm looking at this, now I've gone ahead and reconnected my cake factory up so we can actually start making icing and cakes again so that we can actually produce mana to produce our force now that we actually have a connection also while i was doing that i let our force build up a bit more over here so i can go ahead and create some more force gems by plumping that there it'll make some force gems and then we can repeat the process over and over manually for now until we get ender tanks now it's not that big of a deal but it is something we can do for now. So I really want to go ahead and make my first dash infused mesh, mesh to end off the episode today. However, we only do have two dash, I believe. And while I could go explore the moon for some more, I do want to be able to create it myself in the art furnace. Now we don't have the power, gener we have the power generation to do so. However, we don't have the power capacity to do so. Now I can't upgrade my energy cubes without osmium, but I can go ahead and make elite universal cables, which each cable has a capacity of 409 thousand fe which means three of them will have 1.2 million approximately and that should be enough to make one dash ingot per run so the internal capacity will be act as a buffer between the arc furnace and my hp capacitor or my hp connector right and these are pretty easy to make i just need flux ducts infused alloy and surface core studs and an induction spelter surrounded around an infused alloy and then grab a reinforced alloy which is just a diamond surrounding an infused alloy and a metallurgic infuser so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give my crusher four diamonds this should be enough i don't think i'll need more i will grab my infused alloys which i have five of still like luckily and we'll make some more flux ducts which is the steel right we need flux ducts which is the steel cable here so i've just come down here to make some more steel cables or sorry some more flux ducts and apparently this guy wasn't connected to power so i had to reconnect him however this i've added just a bit more volatile redstone inside of it as i don't want to use all my volatile redstone as that is another thing we can do right now actually and that is make better magnets so we can actually have better power so what i want to do is i guess what i should hmm yeah i probably should make the magnets now however i do want to go ahead and make these coils and i need eight of them that's ten okay that's enough so i went ahead and made some more flux ducts down below with our induction or sorry our include encapsulator i'll come over here to the induction smelter and this should make slowly but surely i might put some upgrades in that guy holy cow it's slow Okay, I've gone ahead and fully upgraded this guy with uh, linkage amplifiers and the hard integral component. And, oh, it makes weight. Oh, per four, it makes eight. Okay, that's not bad at all. Well, then we'll have plenty of, plenty of these guys. Well, we'll have that many, I guess. And what I want to do is grab my metallurgy confuser. I don't need all this redstone. Not that big of a deal. I will grab my diamonds. Luckily, it didn't despawn because I did not hook that up properly. But I'll throw the diamonds in there. One of those... Is that really not enough diamonds? I need 60. I really should have just checked. 
before just randomly throwing it in there. However, we are running low on diamonds. Like I said, you can make it with cold coke, so it's not that big of a deal. But I do want my dash infused meshes <laughs> set up on Twister, because as you see, we do have all of these guys pumping away. And eventually, you know what, may as well grab the sieves off for now. And eventually we will have all of these sieves made into dash infused meshes, that is. However, I do just want the gravel one for now. Oh, speaking of which, I can actually turn this back on, right? Yeah, all of these guys will run at 4096. And how much stress units is that actually using up? Probably like a decent chunk of them, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, we only have 21k left, which isn't too surprising. I am using quite a lot of stress units just to run my sifters at max speed. However, I should have diamond dust, which means I'll have my infused in here and eventually we will make these all the highest tier universals but for now we don't really have that luxury so i'll make what eight advanced is this a quest i don't think it is no it doesn't seem to be and then we'll make the elites and what i can do is come over here destroy all these connectors placed on universal cable like so and i can make the buffer actually pretty large and this is 2.45 million fe yeah i'm not too worried about that running out of power these guys will slowly fill up the internal buffer slowly that is can i set this to actually fill up there we go so specifically to make it fill up the internal buffer that, buffer that is is you actually have to set an export at least visually that is i'm not entirely sure if it's a mechanism glitch or not but as long as you set an export on the hvr connector this will act as a buffer because before it wasn't i guess i don't know it's kind of weird However, I should be able to make a dash ingot, and these guys are slowly draining of power, yeah. It does require a lot of power to make a single dash ingot. Oh wow, I still can't even make it. That's crazy. I guess I just need more FE per tick, and these guys can only transfer so much. I wonder if it's more efficient to just remove this for now and add on a HV connector directly, just for now, until we can get a better uh, energy cube. As these guys can only... Where did he go? Hello? Oh, it's on top. Oh, that's going to be a pain. It might genuinely be a better idea to do this for now and see how fast these fill up instead. You know, I'll say it's not much faster. I'll be honest. However, this guy can just act as an intermediary for now. We'll do input and we'll remove that. And so that's just a power buffer for, I guess, power buffer sakes. Not entirely sure. But these guys will slowly fill up. This is the best option we have at the moment eventually i i guess i can connect it directly over with the elite universal cables however for now we're going to use these and then we'll eventually we will we'll get flux plugs and flux ducts which require ender cores which require the energizing orb which is dialectic paste and dialectic paste is kerosene which is oil so this is something we actually can probably do next episode now oh, that might seem it it might be too ambitious i'm not entirely sure and i do need to hook this back up so i can have force being made again i probably should just have two drawers but we will have ender tanks soon as well i keep saying we'll have something soon but then i don't actually make it gotta stop contemplating and just do it but yeah this guy will make plenty of enough and as you see we have so many force planks left over you only need one of these setups for each pyrolyzer so basically a pyrolyzer can run i guess sorry a single one of these setups can run like 10 pyrolyzers probably. So eventually that's what we'll do. We'll have a bunch of pyrolyzers lined up in parallel and just making a bunch of force fluid and obviously golden power source. Because yeah, these have 5.2k logs backed up. Obviously that is because we did use Phyto, Phyto Grow. It does make a boosted amount, but it should never you should never run out of force logs with only one setup and you'll have plenty of planks. So we are backlogging in force infused bow diesel already, which is actually super nice. So we have 32 buckets there and then 20,000 buckets in the pipes. And then this pipe should act as a giant buffer as well. Yeah, it's 43,000, which means this guy here will also act as a buffer and then we'll have the internal buffer there. And that is just always re uh, required based off of our force gems. And we have a decent amount, so I'm not too concerned about running out of force infused bio diesel anytime soon. So by the time we can actually automate this with ender tanks around the base that is, and ender drawers or ender tanks and whatever, right? We won't have to be concerned about like running around and getting this filled every two seconds because it does burn through pretty slowly and we are making 21,000 stress extra at the moment. So if I now try to make some dash, hopefully, the buffer is large enough back here. I didn't check, but it is 2.42 million. 
so it should be a large enough buffer to make ourselves our first two dash ingots, that is. And then eventually we can make advanced pressure tubes with these guys as well. But I do want to make the dash ingot, and this is literally the only way in the pack to make it. There is no other way in the pack to get dash ingots, so you have to use the arc furnace, which is kind of annoying, but they're easy enough to automate. Once again, input on the top, output, or sorry, input, output, and then output on the front here. However, that is our first dash ingot made manually, and this still has 1 million FE buffer, so it's pretty good. And I never grabbed a force infused battle diesel ingot. And they have upgraded this quest to give some decorative plate seams. And there's our first two dash ingots. And we obviously got the two from here. So what I can do is use these to make spring line infused dash in our arc furnace again. So I need spring line and I need four spring line dust. So we'll give that to this guy over here. And we can eventually craft four spring line infused dash with force sticks, which I will need some force planks from so I can just come over here with a sequential fabricator grab out a stack and make myself four sticks like so and there we go so once again we'll come back over here to our thing spring line dust will go in this side and then dust will go on that side and these guys should cook up a lot faster it doesn't require as much power yeah I mean our universal cable is still going down however that is our first spring line infused dash which is a quest in itself, which gives us the purple people eater. Interesting. Not entirely sure what that's for. Uh, I guess the quest probably does explain it. Amethyst golems. Oh, this is just telling us how to make amethyst golems. Okay. I mean, that's pretty obvious, I guess. But maybe not everyone knew about amethyst golems, obviously. So that's fair. However, we'll grab our spring light and infused dash. I don't believe there's any other uses for this. Oh, it used to make modular rudders. Good to know. But that is our first spring line infused dash mesh. We can go ahead and right click it on here. If it wasn't so loud, we can actually take our raw silver. Is this not the same raw silver? Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, I guess that's not hooked up, right? Yeah, it's not. This should still be the same drawer, right? There we go. Should be good. Silver is going through. Diamonds are filling up, I think. Oh, we do need a space for raw geodes, it seems. Raw geodes can go there. Perfect. They're not like they're not the most useful thing, but geodes are kind of cool. You can break them open to get either diamonds, emeralds, or a few different kinds of ores. However, the ores they give aren't the same ores as these ore dictionaries, means they're not processable. So for example, you can get osmium raw osmium from opening a geode. However, that raw osmium is not processable as it is disabled as raw osmium itself is disabled in the pack, as there is no way to obtain it. So they've just disabled it entirely, which means the raw osmium you get from geodes is actually useless, which is unfortunate because that is a really, I think that's a really cool way to actually make use of these geodes because they did include them in the loot table specifically in Sprinkline Dash. So you should be able to use the ores from the geodes to actually process. However, I will show that later. This will fill up to 256. There's no like uses on it, but I will show you how to process these later on. It's not a big deal. But we are getting diamonds and emeralds now. We are also getting silver by the hundreds. And what I'll do is I'll give this to our crusher for now. Now, I don't want to give it too much because eventually we will get our tier 6 crusher up and running. But for now, to get our tier 6 crusher, we will need a bunch of silver dust to make iasnium and then iasnium to make osmium and platinum and then platinum will get us or i guess it's just iasnium to make the crusher if i'm not mistaken right yeah the tier 6 crusher is just a block of uh, iasnium and then but this also needs merid or sorry red afrit dust to make red chalk and then afrit dust is another ritual that is something we will set up in the next episode or two episodes from now depending on what we do i don't want to guarantee anything however this episode we got our first force infused battle diesel set up we got our force obviously set up we made our first dash ingots with our dash meshes over here and to cap off the episode what i want to do is i want to remove three of these magnets because i believe i have enough to do so and with this this should pop down to 491 oh my goodness so slow however if i come down here and throw it in this fluid encapsulator i will get redstone magnets and if i calculated correctly this should be enough what did we get we got running shoes increases move speed that's pretty useful yeah i don't really need the kitty slippers not bad i'll take them this should be enough yeah it is literally just enough to make these however that is 36 redstone magnets we can go ahead and throw this in our offhand grab our builder's wand to make sure it's set to none and if I come back around here, 
Remember, this was at 2,000 FE per tick before. For our third round, we are now making 3.4 thousand. So eventually I will upgrade to this last row of magnetite blocks, but that does use up a decent amount of our stress capacity as it does use more stress to make more power. Obviously, you have to you can't just have one making more power without using more stress. But we've gone ahead and upgraded our magnets. We have upgraded our production for force infused ballast diesel, or I guess created it in general. We have force gems being made over here with a crystallizer, and we got our dash infused mesh set up, so now we have infinite diamonds and emeralds and silver. Now, that's a decent amount, so what I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here. Now, obviously, I don't think this was my best episode, but I hope you guys enjoyed nevertheless. I still don't feel 100%, but I did want to get a video out. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, leave a like on the video. If you learned something or if you want to teach me something, leave it in the comments below. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads or any of the videos, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.